are in the presence of a god. A golden god. 112 <laughs> enter, two remain. I called it. That's the last I will speak of it. That's the last anyone will talk about it. A golden Just know that this day, god. I was correct. Cap, you were close. You were a close second, my friend. <laughs> Man, I'm so salty. I I'm would so be too. salty. I missed that. I would be too. God how do? How, and, and I'm honestly thinking, how do they not pick Gyrocopter there? Is it really that bad? I mean, I knew <laughs> it wasn't very good, but... I, I don't know. I kind of expected, like... Because that's the thing. It can fit into, like, support or carry. It's just garbage at both, you know? So, <laughs> <laughs> so it was definitely a really good choice. Thank you, thank and you. I can't, I can't believe it came down to a visage, a visage carry just... or a gyro carry, and Ichi was like, "Gyro carry is so bad right now that we're gonna go visage carry." And it's an RTZ visage. It's not even a Zy visage. It's a good old <sighs> yeah. RTZ visage. What okay, a way to um, start this game. I mean, I don't even know how to game. analyze this game. To to be honest, it's I, like um, I don't know either. The, the original way I looked at it is that the aggro dual lane of Universe and um, and Zai's Lich Doom combination is it, like Lone Druid safe lane can deal with that, I think, relatively well, right? He's a safe laner that can just play really passive and won't feel too pressured by an aggro dual lane like this. And then I, I think the mid matchup, which is going to be Lena versus. Um, Lena versus Wind Ranger is kind of uh, a bit of a wash. Oh. And then uh -oh. I think it's the efficiency of the jungle. Ooh. Oh, Zai, you're taking some chilling touch damage. Are you actually going to live? He's juking through. He actually what? might make it out alive. There's no way. Zai's actually going to live. And it looks like Jarex is going to be the one to fall. He's not going to be able to get his way through. He's going to hide in the tree line here. They don't see him. They finally win with Crit coming in. And Arteezy gets the first blood. No one else dead just yet. Anna's pretty low, but so too is Crit starting to fall down. He's left alone. He's going to get charged up. And that'll be that. Grape Chill onto Anna. LSA to connect and Fly will grab the kill on the Enigma. Meanwhile, another hero that goes down is in fact the Wind Ranger that No Tail gets the kill with. So even though EG do get the first blood og come out on top in terms of the numbers and trades and they have a very long walk oh man too bad s4 he blew all his mana i was gonna say oh s4 could charge up to the top lane and get there before the visage is there and right and he would be able to get some some decent time without fearing harassment but uh not the case since he used both charges in that level one engagement oh, i man. think I think uh, OG actually came out Ooh, on top there because of the double shot. kill. I think so too. Uh, let me look at the graph. And, yeah, and they have I, a slight also, advantage. Also because like Anna was missing uh, a bit of HP when he goes to lane while Samael, yes he died, but oh, it's not like he loses Sal's anything canceled. for that. Samael canceled the salve of Anna with a power shot, which was nice. Um, Arteezy was a little bit late to his lane, even later so than um, S4 was. This good old uh, core visage, is carry visage, we'll see if they can get anything done with that. S4 is rather tanky, he's a poor man's shield too, so good luck bringing him down without soul assumption or like splinter blast or what have you. But um, this bottom lane should go pretty well for, for No-Till, I think. He's sitting at three last hits. Then you have the free farming jungle enigma, which Fly is just like, yep, I'm fine. I do have a camp block, but whatever. Yeah, I think... Um... Like, the way I see it, OG is going to be okay with the way all the lanes go, and then they have the efficiency of an Enigma. So, um, I think that ultimately they win out in the laning phase, and then they're going to transition really well because they'll have uh, a mech early on on the Enigma. And, ooh, unless the male, like, beats out Ana in mid, which is possible here. I mean, and they also have the, the Grave Chill, or not the Grave Chill, rather the Arch of Burn coming out as Ana's going to have to get back. Sumail will get a couple of uh, last or right, right clicks in, but the Shackle shot, the power shot, is it enough damage with that auto attack? He needs one more. He'll find it, but he does go down to the tower with no wind run available. He was not going to be able to make it out of that one alive. He still does get the kill before dying, which is huge. The, um... I recently played against uh, a Visage, and despite all of these extra items being really shitty for Visage to have to deal with, his familiars are easily hunted down right now uh, because of items like Dragon Lance and um, Echo Saber. He does, like, one of the items is a big boost to him, which is that Blightstone. Um, in laning phase, Grave Chill, you get attack speed out of it, so you're able to deal a lot more right clicks uh, against your enemy. And when you finally have the familiars, the familiars, the amount of burst damage, like physical damage you can do in, in a short window of time, thanks to that extra bit of minus armor you get uh, so early on, is amazing. Uh, I think that's like one of the few things that you could say that's good about Visage in this is, uh, is the fact that Blightstone is an item.
Yeah, I mean, for sure. It definitely is going to help him out. He is solo laning against S4 for now. He's doing okay in CS. They're actually tied right now. Coming back in again, the Shackle Shot will latch. He already used another salve for Ana. That's all he's got left. He's already used that salve. He's only got a Null Talisman. You can see Crit is nearby. There's no Radiant Vision to scout him out. But Ana knows that he's been around for a while. So he's not going to go too far up. Meanwhile, down bottom, Frost Flash will go as the Lich Doom Dual Off Lane, as the, the panel talked about. A very old school type of off lane. Doing a pretty good job so far. Only 5 CS though for the Doom, so clearly a uh, pretty good lane so far for No-Tail in this bottom lane. Big yeah, uh, he's he's doing pretty well in CS. He's not, not ever going to feel particularly threatened, right? The most they can threaten him is when they Scorch Earth and run at him, and he just responds by Savage Roaring you. So if Universe starts getting close to him and he feels like, oh, I'm in a bit of trouble, just Savage Roars. And Jerex finds a solo kill on the Lich who walked into that Chilling Touch and Ice Vortex. Not sure. He was really low. Zaya thought was going to go back home. Maybe he thought about denying well, I himself I think Anna's instead. dead again. Anna. This is the LSA. Arctic Burn and one auto attack from Sumail will do the job. And it does fall. That's the second death of the game. Meanwhile, at the bottom rune spot, Jerex and Universe going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Jerex is going to pick up the bounty rune. Still, you have the top two CS coming out for Evil Geniuses. You have Arteezy, who's up there with 24 now, which is really good. And then you have in the mid lane, uh, Sumail sitting at 23 himself. A very good start for EG. You do it like we talked about. It's it's farming. It's farming that lone druid. I, my question is, how effective is a, a a visage with farm going to be with a blightstone? Whatever. I don't even know what you build. Hold that thought. Anna getting ganked a bit again. LSA, not dodge this time. Power shot. It's there, but it doesn't connect, and that'll keep him alive. But it, going back to my previous question, Cap. I mean, what does a core visage offer you when you get to that mid game? Uh, it's tough to say. Like, he offers a lot of physical damage in a very short period of time. Um, he can be a really good team fighter. The problem I actually foresee is that the heroes that he would typically be strong against, um, like low armor supports and stuff, that's not really here. Like, sure, Ancient Apparition is an easy kill, but Ancient Apparition doesn't matter too much if it's already blown Ice Blast. Spirit Breaker's high armor. Enigma is going to be high armor because of the mech. Um, Lone Druid has just natural tankiness that you can't burst him down immediately. So, uh, it's just, it, Visage Core can be more effective. It just happens to be in, that in this game, he has to deal with um, some significant armor heroes. The the best hero he's going to be good against is the Lina. If he can actually somehow get onto the Lina with his uh, Visage Familiars and apply that minus armor from Blightstone or from the Medallion later on into the game, he could just really easily threaten her. So yeah. she she can't actually sit there in the back, of the back lines because she's going to be forced to run away from these yeah. Familiars every time. That's a good point. And she's not like she's already having a she's not having a particularly good game to begin with this Lena. Eleven last hits, man, and she's died twice. Now top lane, there's the Grave Chill S4. They should have enough for the soul assumption. They do easy kill. Fly rotates up, not level six. He's very close. Even with it, he wouldn't be able to get a kill with the black hole that he would solo. And uh Well, that's just a nice little kill getting RTs some more farm. Continuing to get pressured to mail in this mid lane. One of his best heroes is his Wind Ranger, and he's showing you why right now. Yeah, this is just unfair, to be honest, because the Wyvern had such a big effect um, setting up those first couple of kills on Anna. Now he has to oh, face man. up against a Phase Boots Wind Ranger. It's two um, levels two ahead levels of him, too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's crazy to me. He can't beat that. Stamail even goes for the maxed out Shackle Shot, because his physical damage is more important. Power Shot doing some nice work, but again, and Anna just doesn't have the bottle on him currently. He, he's going to have to ferry out another self. Does he have the bottle to begin with? I don't think he does. No. So he, this is, wow, he is so underfarmed. Another Shackle Shot, the angle's not quite there, but with the Frost Blast, it's more than enough to get the kill. EG are crushing this mid lane with Sumail and the help of the supports on top of it. I'm beginning to wonder if they, they don't have like a really good babysitting support, but maybe the Enigma should be, should have spent more time around that mid lane, or maybe S4 could have rotated uh, to mid instead of trying to get farm at, at top lane so much. Uh, something, because I don't, I don't know if Anna is gonna be able to play that comeback w with a tempo controller like Lena. It's, it's not an easy hero to just reliably say, oh, you know, it's okay if I die here, I'll come back in the mid game, because you need to be so active in mid game. Yeah, you, otherwise, you just turn into a support Lena. I mean, it's pretty much what she is right now. She's not even six yet. She really needs that Laguna Blade, among other things. You'd like to be, as soon as you get that level 6, you might want to like rotate around, find a kill with like a smoke or something with that Laguna Blade. That's just not, it doesn't seem like it's going to happen anytime soon. Arteezy with the one bird nearby, looking to help scout things out. They have Zy rotating back up. No Chain Frost, he's level 4. Sacrifice still coming aplenty. 
Looking at the net worth graph, it is going to be a 70, uh, 750 net worth lead for EG, which is not much. And a lot of that is because you have a good farming jungle enigma as well as the lone druid. Who has rotated up top. Going to try to pressure this tower. One way to get back into the game, get some tower gold going for you, especially in that safe lane. It's easy. S4, going to cut off the path of the retreat. He has the medallion up, though. Only the one familiar, not really doing that much damage. Charge comes out, actually hits the familiar. Now going on top of Arteezy. Nether Strike going to go. It's going to hit Zai, who's also frozen up here by the Cold Feet. Sumail has arrived, so too has Universe with the Doom. And it's going to go right on to Fly. So he has no ability to use that Black Hole, and he might die to the Soul Soul Assumption. That is a long range Soul Assumption that helps get the kill. So one for one exchange. Jack Shut latches no. beautifully. The Soul Assumption going to get a double kill for Arteezy. Followed up by one more triple kill auto attack for Arteezy. And they might find the fourth. Anna is, however, in Viz. I don't know if she really can kill anybody here with a Laguna or even just a full combo. Universe especially is rather tanky. She's going to follow after them, but that is a amazing fight. And Arteezy with Soul Assumption is able to just dish out the damage. Yeah, if S4 just charged the bottom lane instead of charging the Doom and then having to cancel it, realizing a bit too late he couldn't do anything there, then they would have escaped with only losing one hero. Oh god, they almost got that! He almost got that. He dropped it for half a second. Cold and Brave oh, no. keeps him alive. Can he make it out of this? He has no win run skilled up. LSA not on point. Sumail, power shot will go through. Lone Druid does find the kill on Arteezy in the top of the lane in the meantime. And it's so low, but the charge back in. Now the Shackle Shot comes out, stopping any further aggression. Splinter Blast, it might bring down Anna, and it does! He walks up into his own death! Oh, Support he wasn't expecting Lina. it. And it it's is happening. It's, yeah, it's 100% happening. You are absolutely right, my friend. And S4 yeah. needs to be a little careful here, although... Oh, he's got the old. available. Nether Strike is gonna go, the ultimate not doing enough. Oh, he got the bash! Sumail goes down, was not expecting the two-hit bash coming out from S4. S4 is like, thank you very much, I'll take that gold. They're pushing top wall, this is all happening, but down bottom it's a dive. Frost Flash, but Drax does have at least his uh, raindrops. The Dragon Slave brings down the Lich, and Universe has gone too far. Running low on mana himself, LSA not up for another second or two. Grave Chill, Arteezy's rotated in, LSA misses this time. Dragon Slave also now on cooldown, Anna will die to one more auto attack. And now it looks like Drax will fall as well. Good Ice Flash will come through, won't bring anybody down, but it is going to be a two for two across the map. If the Lich dies, the Wind Ranger dies, and then, they, like I said, top lane, that, that tier 1 tower was taken by No-Tail. So, here's the thing, OG do have No-Tail farming well uh, yes, in this game. They, they have a very farmed No-Tail, um, and they will have, I think, a pretty impactful um, Enigma. So, those two heroes, they are rather top-heavy when it comes to their net worth in comparison to the rest of the team. Um, Evil Geniuses is, is I, I think, a much more evenly farm perspective to their roles. Like, Samael is going to have a heavy impact. Uh, Arteezy is going to have a heavy impact as well. Because the other thing about Visage is that um, people, people don't usually think about this, but Visage is a very tanky hero uh, because of great... Gravekeeper is close right. uh, because you have all this extra armor and magic resistance, so he will be able to survive through the um, initial burst. So he can actually play kind of more of a frontline. Well, I chain frost will go, but won't bounce. Ice blast. There's the winner's curse coming out. And there's the, the cold feet, which will bring down Sumail as the first kill. Crit might be the second. The Nether Strike is already gone. No further follow. But now the LSA stops the uh, RT from getting at least the Soul Assumption or Grave Chill off. Here comes the Doom. And they'll have to deny the Enigma, and they might not be able to do it. Good LSA, now they can. One more auto attack, and they get the job done. Nice deny from Ana, but they're still chasing him down. Splinter Blast going again. Universe, Cold Feet's up, but he'll be able to run it off with the, mo the movement speed that he does have. Now getting body blocked by S4. The rest of the EG's team is leaving him behind. Nether Strike not available. They have the charge ready to go. The Eidolon's coming in. The LSA should be enough with the Laguna Blade on top, and Ana finds a kill, surviving for what seems to be the first time in this entire game. OG is getting so much space to no tail. He almost has that tier two tower at top lane. And they traded uh, really well at mid. And they've got a hand of Midas that's kicking in over time. They're going to have uh, a rather fast radiance. And that is going to be disastrous for EG because they're, they're a team that's reliant on a lot of burst damage. And they lose out in sustained fights because of the mech, because of the Ancient Apparition Ice Blast, because of the radiance that's going to be burning them over time. So if they don't get these like really quick kills, then they may actually end up losing fights where they're normally supposed to win at 15, 20 minutes. Fly may very well be dead here. Yes, he's absolutely dead. Arteezy was waiting for a pickoff, and they'll find it with Fly rotating in the bottom lane. They'll try to get the tier one tower here, but again, the trade might come through. No tail. He pops up the rabid, ready to go. Battle cry as well, and they're going to take this tower down rather quickly. 
Although the ice armor is there, so maybe not so quick. Ice blast coming in, might hit on two. The trail will, but no actual damage coming through. Jerax is going to push them back. He drops a ward down in the meantime. Zero one tower is taken in the, in the mid lane, the bottom lane. It looks like it will also be taken here for EG. But again, this is probably a better trade for OG because of the uh -oh. fact that they're getting more map control out of this. Oh, that's charge. Shot. Nah, sport's fine. Mm -hmm. My heroes nearby. They're going to move towards mid for OG. And the net worth advantage is pretty good for them. 2,000. 13 minutes in. It's nice. Charge not completed on Dismail. They should know that uh, maybe that the, the ward has been placed down. Probably don't know that it's there. I don't see a sentry coming in. And you're absolutely right about No-Tail. They're getting so much room. I mean, he's 2,400 gold. He's got his Midas. It's, uh, using it. There you go. About a thousand away from his relic, or at least a thousand two hundred. Yeah, the hard point is going to be evil geniuses should try and pressure really hard to about fifteen minutes because they they need to take these objectives, but they also don't have a hero to be able to single-handedly deal with this lone druid push. You know, like they don't have uh, a really good pushing hero. They don't have somebody who can single-handedly address the lone druid. Oh, that have savage to roar was so good. Universe has the doom. They want no tail. They might find him here. More body blocks from Zai. They need this kill. Arctic Burn's already on cooldown. No tail is so fast. The Frost Blast slowing him down. The Doom is there. The TPs are coming. Can they get the deny off in time? Savage Roar is not up. Not even can use it. Of course he denied oh, himself. he denied himself with the bear. Are you kidding me? Oh my god. It was such a needed kill. And now they're turning it around. Laguna Blade. They have Black Bolt already if they need it. But Universe is already low. The Ice Blast was perfectly placed. And it gets a double kill. I cannot believe he denied himself with the bear. Oh, no tell. Flower. Now they're going to charge gonna him. They'll so find much. the Lich. The cold feed is up. He'll fall momentarily. Wait, Black what? hole was canceled. They wanted RD. Listen, you know what? It's one sick play followed by a little bit of a misstep. I know what he was going for. doesn't matter. They've already killed four anyways. The only survivor is going to be the Wind Ranger, and that is a huge engagement coming out from OG. They do not even give away that kill on no tell. The only thing they lost was Jerax on that ancient apparition and just think about that for a second that's crazy <laughs> that, is, that is crazy you know what's also crazy is that Lena's making somewhat a comeback he's, he's in right fourth here. in net worth he's not too far behind both Arteezy and Samael and that's just because they've had such a, a rough go of it over the last couple of engagements like they, they that's evil geniuses are supposed to win engagements right now but they've just been outplayed by OG damn this is EG had a great start to this game, well, besides, of course, the, the first blood, but everything else has been tip-top up until maybe about five-ish minutes ago. You could see the net worth graph kind of reflects that as well. Maybe around that 11-minute that mark is when it started getting a bit out of control for evil geniuses. And now the anchor take lands this up. Mid -tower. They, they need to take this mid-tower so badly before the, the radiance is up. Oh, oh poor Jerax. You're dead. I I mean, he's playing a pilot eye roll right there, right? Yeah. He, he That's pushes such a into good, a smoke that... Yeah. That's such a good smoke to reveal, because now they're already around mid, ready to play. They're ready to defend. Tower is in deny range, so... I don't think they want to give it up, though, like you talked about. I think it's just such a pivotal point on the map that OG aren't trying to give it up for free at this point. Sumail getting charged now. Shackle shot's gonna go. Another strike, not in range. The bear can't find an entangle proc. Splinter Blast will go. No tail, not in his true form. And we'll back up. What a game. And now each year five manning. It looks like it with the exception of Universe who's looking to farm a little bit further. What does RTZ have now? Right, he's just... him, Scepter? Yeah, probably. Um your Your familiars are so much physical damage, and I think the Ags is a great upgrade after you get the completed medallion solar crest. So tower. they they absolutely push mid tower here because they know the lone turret's not going to come back and defend. Uh, they can't. They can't. They just clear out the creep with too quickly, and now they they have to run. Yeah, but they got no tail top. There's the nether strike, Sumail. There's going to be the ice blast. The LSA. He's done. No tail did die in that top lane. However, as you mentioned, universe getting the kill with the no doom expended. Crit was there with the winter's curse to set things up. Sumail does die in the mid lane. So even when they get a huge kill, they still lose their. One of their biggest net worth heroes, and again, they cannot get that tier one tower. There is no glyph now, but uh, all right, maybe OG. someone could just go back to it real quickly or something. Yeah, I, I would have said it's too male, but he's dead still. <laughs>
Uh, and <laughs> what was supposed to be a really fast, like, Ag's uh, Maelstrom Blink Dagger is being stalled out. He, he still does not have that Aghanim Scepter, despite being rather close to it about five, five, seven minutes ago. Like, he was well on his way with that point booster yeah. and uh, staff, but... An interesting here for the ZG squad. It's starting to get a little tricky. You have EG's TZ farming pretty well, Sumail as well as we mentioned just a moment ago. They have to deal with this lone druid who, at this point, his relic could have been a bit earlier. He did throw out twice in a row not too long ago, so his relic will come out now, but when he gets that rating, this game gets that much harder. And, uh, I don't know though. They again, we talk about that tier one tower. It is finally gone. Good thing yeah. for EG. They can start getting a bit more aggressive when it comes to this jungle. It's getting charged up. He has the cold embrace of DB. There is a smoke there. The LSA might go. Not even needed. It's the Dragon Slave that does the job. S4 is going in a bit too deep. And here comes a big ice blast. will hit RTZ. Fly Black Hole is going to use it. They've got the root. They don't even need it. RTZ, the biggest pickup they could have gotten for OG. And they'll look for more. The charge is up. They will find the ledge. The Shackle Shot does come out in time. The Power Shot will come through. Frost Blast to cover the retreat. The Aghanim Scepter has been picked up for the Wind Rager for Smail if they want to try to turn around. But again, with two dead, at this point, it's just going to be it's going to be difficult to defend this tower, let alone fight. I don't... The fact that they're pushing go. without the Radiance says so so many bad things for evil geniuses. Bad. Because once that Radiance is up, everything becomes so much harder. The evil geniuses don't have any, like, really big power items that are being picked up, right? Like, it's not like there was a Blink Dagger that's ever going to come in for this team that changes the nature of this game. They're just kind of, like, picking up some overall, like, general stat sustain kind of items. But they don't really change the, the nature of how these team fights are being played out uh, at all. So... They're going to go for the smoke now, but even if they catch someone, right? Say they catch Ana at the bottom lane because he's showing, uh, or they get this Roshan. Look how like efficiently OG is able to play off this map. They know this is happening. Jerex pinged it like 10 seconds ago. He's already thrown out the Ice Blast. Oh, I don't know. They might be able to rotate over fast enough. Do you think you charge? Yeah, they can go for this if they want to. The TP is already coming in from Jerex. They still have no tail in that top lane for now. This is dangerous. Chain Frost is up if they fight in confined space. Dragon Slay does hit onto Arteezy, but that's about it. They're going to try to go back into the pit with the Medallion, with the Solar Crest, and do what they can. Lone Druid is already up towards that Tier 3 tower. Tier 2 accomplished. I don't know. It's I don't lower think you can test this anymore. You're, yeah, you're they, just happy you got Radiance. Yeah, he's got Radiance. He's pushing into the Tier 3 tower. Dragon Slay will come out. This is going to be a Winner's Curse, actually. Now the Lina taking a lot of damage. Chain Frost going to bounce through as well. Good mech. But Ana is dead, as well as the Doom on Fly. They might lose two here. There's the Infer In Infernal Blade. Alongside a little bit of right-click damage, he'll fall. A buyback comes out from Melina, which is going to put them behind. They do have the Lone Druid still going to work on that tower, finally. They will TP up the Wind Ranger to make sure he does not just take this Rax. But the Tier 3 is gone. So even though they lost two, they lost Rax. They do get the Tier 3 tower out of it for OG. Yeah, I don't think forcing that fight was quite worth it for um, OG. They got just a little bit too close and lost two heroes. Because um, they, they could have actually just walked away from that Roshan pit, and they would have had Radiance on Lone Druid, and they would have had about half damage on the Tier 3. Completing the Tier 3 tower is good, and it does give you a lot of uh, a huge amount of gold. Um, I'm just not sure if the bit of gold that they fed to EG and the bit of experience that they got is worth that half the life. I guess, of, of the Tier 3 tower. Either way, very clearly, OG come out on top through all of these exchanges. They continue to get farther and farther ahead of the Lone Druid while still killing a, a decent amount of net worth on their other heroes, like S4 and his Shadow Blade. Um, is a really nice pickup because they're going to split push the map so heavily with this Lone Druid Radiance that heroes are naturally going to have to split apart on EG. They're going to have to separate, which provides openings for Spirit Breaker to get work done. You can already see he's fishing for a couple of kills here with his Shadow Blade up. Blink Dagger is now there for Sumail, which is going to help things in terms of initiation. And I did have to buy back there, which puts him a little bit behind on his Yule Scepter, so... He's still kind of that support Lena, even though uh, he isn't that mid lane. He's done the best that he could. They're going to smoke themselves up. Sumail's going to break it, finds himself an Invis rune, detection-wise. Well, he doesn't pop the Invis yet. Now he will. He's trying to blink to the high ground. He's but barely outside of it. And the Radiant Spurn should be there, and it is going to continue to break. I see him now. Force Sumail's Blink Dagger. The Root will come out. 
And I don't see him surviving this. They they aren't really going for him. They're trying to make sure they can get a fight on their terms. Dash on the universe. There's the Laguna Blade. He's low. Not dead yet. Mech keeping everybody alive on the OG side. Universe will be first to fall. They have the Winner's Curse now. Can they kill the Lena? Absolutely. Chain Frost bouncing through, doing at least one or two bounces, but that's it. It's a one-for-one -one trade so far. There's a the Soul Assumption fly. Pops the... The Hooded Defiance Shell to make sure he can keep himself up and alive. Sumail has the Aegis. That's what they were afraid of fighting into. Savage War will go. They're trying to bring down this bear now. They have the Solar Crest, Solar Assumption, but it's not enough. They needed more lockdown. On the other side, Crit barely alive. Gets off Total Brace. And now the Jackal Shot, Spear Breaker. He'll fall to the Focus Fire of Sumail. Level 2 Focus Fire. They have the damage reduction still there, but it's not much. And that's it. A good fight coming out. Yeah, they lost the Aegis for EG, but Felina, they get the Spear Breaker. Pretty good fight. Yeah. Yeah, I think considering the the fact that OG are ahead, evil geniuses win out on that fight. They get about a thousand golds, um, net worth in exchange. Oh, and there may actually get no tail here. The savage gonna war get, is still up. They're going to get the bear at okay. least. The bear will die to the tower. That won't get the three hundred gold. No oh, tail is uh, a little too quick. Meanwhile, top lane you do have. Uh, they have to an easy pick off there. The ancient apparition with Sumail. However, no tails rotated and another GP coming in. That will be from Melina. He has Blink Dagger once he can get away from the Radiance Burn. He's got it now and it'll blink further away. If only they had, um, like, a respectable amount of net worth on a mid lean at this point would be the Yule Scepter and probably closing it on Blink Dagger. And if they had that, the game would be so hard because evil geniuses would be forced to, to deal with split pushes and they would have to do some split pushing themselves sometimes. And they, um they would just be caught out every single time by Spirit Breaker and Lena. Like, they would have two really good catch heroes, but unfortunately, because they don't have the Yules uh, or the Blink Dagger, the Yules is complete now, but they also need the Blink Dagger, that catch isn't quite there yet um, to really punish evil geniuses, so... Go. Ooh, S4, that is not where he wanted to end up. Great, dropping the Sensu down, S4. That's a Shackle shot to a tree on the low ground, and that is a dead S4. Yeah, if he strange. stops, he stops half a second earlier. He doesn't end up on that on the cliff, right? He knocked down instead, and then he just walks away. It was just like that half a second where he ended up like stopping right on top of that cliff area, and it pushed him over. <laughs> that that got him killed. And where do we go from here, man? We talk about the Lone Druid a lot. There, there's not much of an advantage for OG here. I mean, they, they were they were on the right path. They had a 3,000, almost 4,000 network advantage. EG have stifled the uh, They've stopped the bleeding, to say the least. They're still kind of being pushed onto their side of the map. But this is what we talked about with the Lone Druid. They're doing a really good job of keeping the lanes pushed in. I, I think um, EG just protect their towers and they try and get to this 30, 35 minute marker where they have BKB on Universe and they have a lot of damage on Sumail and then they can start being the bullies in some way because the Axe Visage can do some split pushing itself and you can keep um, a round of summons, like keep the cooldown off. So you have a, a round of familiars pushing out the top lane and you're pushing in mid with the rest of your team and you can summon the familiars as soon as the team fight breaks out. Uh, in which case you've got this you've got some ways to deal with split push and you can force five bands on OG's side of the map. I think right now it's just like trying to get that basic amount of farm for your mid game. You and not get picked. Them. LSA, this would be a huge one if they could get it. The Glimmer Cape has come through. They have the Ice Blast Finger of Death, or excuse me, Laguna Blade. I'm getting my spells confused. They'll bring down the ancient the winter wyvern. The ancient apparition is doing a pretty good job there with his ice blast. Good chain frost bouncing in Anna, taking a lot of that damage, not dead yet. Power shot. He actually avoids by sidestepping into the tree line. Okay. They'll get a kill. It's only on the Winter Wyvern, but still a kill is a kill, which gives them an opportunity to take down the tier one tower in this bottom lane. Yeah, uh, OG, I think this is um, one of the better times for them to take the last couple of objectives before EG start gaining an advantage. It'll also come down to the next Roshan fight, I believe, is really who controls that 30, 35 minute area, um, is who is able to pick up the next Rosh. So we'll, we'll have to see because both teams can contest and do Roshan relatively easily. Wind Ranger has Focus Fire, Lone Druid has his bear um, to be able to beat onto Roshan. And then both heroes have some ways to be able to get into the pit. Winter Wyvern has Arctic, uh, Arctic Burn and Curse. And then you have Ancient Apparition with uh, Ice Blast. So it's really going to come down to that interaction in the Roshan pit and who takes control of the, the mid game. They're not there yet. Roche is not respawning for a couple of moments. EG still farming away, looking for an ultimate orb for Wind Ranger. We've talked about this already, but 
to go ahead and he picks up next. Anna is going to be looking for the rune. LSA to stop it. Crit has the Witcher's Curse if he needs it. Now he's getting charged. Glimmer Cave comes out preemptively. Sumel was not in position. A Shackle Shot didn't blink for it either. Four heroes together for OG. Smoke looks like it's going to be the ga name of the game, and they're going to go ahead and uh, at least go around this river area and find Zaya. It's going to be first contact. Sumel is the target they want. Sumel is the target they might get, but he sees him. The Shackle Shot is there, but the LSA does connect. Now the Ice Blast, the Laguna Blade. The wind run, Nether Strike should be enough to shatter him, and it will be. The Lone Druid action picks up the kill with his auto attacks and Radiance Burn. But now Superman is dead for 56 seconds. It's time to play Defend the Towers for EG. Your Wind Ranger missing. That was a very nice pickup because it stalls out that Lincolns. The Lincolns will really stop uh, a lot of OG's aggression onto Samael. Like, he's the hero that they want to threaten first in teamfights because he can output so much damage, but he's also so squishy. So things like Charge, uh, Nether Strike, Lina's Yule Scepter to lead things off, those are all stopped. Score. There's going to be the charge. Brit bashed up again. He's down. This is definitely their tier two tower to take. The question is, do they go further? Back to Roche, which has just respawned. Roshan is now up and ready to go. And it looks like that's going to be the call they make. Either that or the tier two tower down bottom, which it looks like that's what they're that's what they're pinging at this point. Mm. This is getting dangerous, man. I'm, try I'm no trying to think if it's better for them to try and do Roshan while the Wyvern's down in that 20, 25 seconds, or if it's better to take the tier two, which does also open up Roshan a bit. Part of it could be that they may not actually know that Roshan is up pretty early right. into his potential spawn time. That could also be a reason. They'll take the tier two tower really quickly, nonetheless. So, Looks like they're going to smoke and try and wrap around and catch. Oh, Jack the shot does latch. S4 will take some damage. Anna's going to try to get him away alongside the help of the bear and the savage roar. Their smoke is broken. S4 and Fly are on the run, and they might actually make it out. No Tail's already teeping away. I don't think Gigi's going to find anything here. And that looks to be true. Jerax teeping out will make it too. The... But with them all leaving, Roshan is up. Yeah, they get the tier 2 tower, but they might lose Roche because of this. I mean, they'll do this very quickly for EG. Yeah, this is... <laughs> Again, it comes back to that question, right? Because OG definitely could have done the Roshan instead of the, the Tier 2. I think they, they might have been contested, but they would have had an advantage at least. But because they went for the Tier 2, and because they were forced back in that in that, um, in that that fight afterwards, that now Roshan and Aegis is giving EG, they have a significant uh, advantage in the next team fight because, again, Samael is going to be public enemy number one when it comes to OG and their target list. So now he's got the Aegis. It's going to be a much harder decision-making process when it comes to those fights. Yeah. So it may just be EG get some free pushes off of um, some towers and OG just respond with split pushing for the next five minutes. But I'm also not sure about that, right? Because it's not like their heroes are, are really going to scale incredibly well. Uh, there are other cores outside of the line. That is a oh, dead no. bear. And 300 gold for Sumail too. And which helps because he's very close to his Lincoln Spear. He is just a void stone away, and this tower will probably provide it for him. Ice Blast, and that should hit just about everybody because he's across the map. Take the tower. He's got almost enough for the void stone. They're going to TP home. You get a four staff for Zai. Outer towers. That's. I mean, there's two left in this game. It's OG. No Tail is going to have his AC. In fact, it's done now. They have to deal with the Aegis. Uh, when do these teams really start going for that big push or that big fight? Well, mm, I don't know. It's always scary going late game against the Lone Druids. So you may want to try and close out this game um, earlier just because the potential threat of what like Aghanims, for example, does on the Lone Druid and how he's able to split push. I don't know where that falls on Shannon's uh, uh, Aghanims list, but the, the ability to be able to have that kind of presence all over the map with um, very little commitment is quite strong late game. So I think Evil Genius is there. Their window to close out this game is like 40, 45 minutes. By close out, I mean try and go high ground um, yeah. for, for at least one time. I, I think they can still scale a bit better on all three of their cores compared to the OG cores. Number 46. Yeah, that's not bad on the list, right? Wow. Number 46. <laughs> so it's like uh, I, I, I think it's just like you've got one core that's really threatening 
Uh, maybe it's better to have three medium sized cores, you know, on EG that are all a bit threatening, all capable of doing something okay. I mean, any Especially one of these can, can get a kill on your, your heroes. I mean, No Tail can kill everybody, but an S4 yeah. solo you down can. Is Lena solo you down? I guess so, but. Especially since, like, Winter Wyvern, for example, is so strong versus the Lone Druid because of uh, being able to Winter's Curse or protect someone against uh, the bear's damage with Gold Embrace. Right. So it's potential that they can actually go later. Um, but I do think they have a significant power spike right now with this Aegis. They should try and punish the these outer towers and get that remaining gold and maybe go high ground with this, this Aegis you, as well. They're this doing this it is so what quickly. you talked about. This is the Aegis that provides you the, the outer towers. If you want to go high ground, you certainly can. This is what the, this Aegis is meant for. So it's very tough to fight in Super OG. They can't. They don't really want to defend these tier two towers. Anna's walking up very whoa, far. Whoa, Arctic whoa. Burn. I don't know about this. Might have misclicked. Not sure. Maybe he was looking for a potential pick. They get off the Winner's Curse. Sumail got charged in the meantime. Here comes No Tail. Shack was shot. BKB popped for S4, but Anna is already dead. Sumail still has that Aegis ready to go. Buy back immediately onto the Lone Druid's Bear. Anna's trying to fight this. As Force BKB still going. They have Black Hole at the ready. Arteezy's full HP for now. Doom comes out. No Black Hole for the Enigma. He does have buyback. Chain Frost bouncing in. Anna's going to die back here if he's not careful. The Yule Scepter Sumail. He has yet to die the first time. Anna still getting lower and lower. Arteezy Soul Assumption up in two seconds. Anna's pretty speedy. And it looks like everyone might survive here for OG. They've already lost two on the side of EG. Now a third. That is going to be Arteezy falling. It's time to back up. EG bit off more, they could, more than they could chew, and that buyback somehow actually works out for OG. I thought for sure there was going to be three or four heroes dying there with how low everybody was, but EG just can't find the kills. <laughs> EG, I, I thought they were like, you know, hey, what's this idiot doing? Like, why is he pushed out so far on the Lita? Now Lita's like, who's the idiot now, you scrubs? Just baited that whole entire was, team fight. I, I was no really idea scared. what that was. I was yeah. really scared he was going to die for a second time, and it was going to be like a dieback after that original play. Would not have been good. But yeah, that, that fight was definitely questionable, but uh, it works out in the end to OG's favor. And... They, have, they needed this blink dagger. Back they up. needed this blink dagger for fly, by the way. Yeah, they did. He's been getting doomed every time. If he can blink in and get a black hole without having to worry about getting doomed, he's fine. He is fine. And then this game gets a lot harder. Potentially. <clears throat> yeah, we've got some very high impact ultis on OG from their supports. We Ancient haven't really Fresh seen yet either. I mean, besides the ice blast, I should say. But like the black yeah. hole has been used once or twice, and one time it missed, I believe. But if he big, if he can hit a big one, then all of a sudden it turns things around. EG are not looking to fight now outside of their base. They're they're suddenly very worried with that the lack of the Aegis. They're not quite at the, the items that they need to fight. They're building, I would imagine, either well the Shivas or the AC. I guess it could be a Lotus Open universe, but I'm not sure. They're gonna they're gonna walk out. They they don't don't smoke and, and try to find a pick. They're just trying to clear out some of these creep waves. Now, OG, it's their turn to put on the pressure. They have that blink dagger, as mentioned previously. But with everybody from EG sitting around their their high ground, we might be waiting a bit. And Roshan, when is that up? Well, not for another two minutes. We'll know and then when the actual respawn time is going to be. I think it's a lot easier um, in many ways for OG to control the map because they have this bear that can split push and they have the appropriate heroes to find pickoffs in Bear Breaker um, and the Lena. So I think in, in many ways when Evil Geniuses gain control of the map, they, they have to push for objectives. But I think in some ways when OG gets control, they can play a little bit of a slower game because they can just control the map very well. Evil Geniuses is... Their lineup just kind of like it gets control and it goes in almost immediately. That charge almost broke their smoke. It still that might. I still mean, might. he's going to walk back to Mel. Hasn't seen him yet. Now they will. The Arctic Burn Shackle Shot doesn't get the BKB off in time and he's dead. He's dead for 60 seconds. The lucky thing for OG, I, don't, I guess I shouldn't say lucky, but the good thing for OG is that the creeps are pushed in very far. I mean, look at all of the waves and where they are currently positioned in the map. OG or EG cannot get anything off of that kill. And they, and they might have to work even harder because that ice blast blows up the creep wave. 
They're like, ah, oh, great. Now we gotta wait till 37.30 until our creep wave spawns that can help us push down mid by that yeah, time. Right. And the, by the time they actually get to the Radiant base, then Spirit Breaker's up. So. I mean, I gotta say, most of these games have been relatively quick in this series, but even still, playing a full best of five is never easy. It's, it's never quick. Yeah, it's, it's been, been a couple of hours now, so EG and OG are getting to that, like, very tense, I'm sure, very mind draining point. Especially um, OG, right? They've been... They've been they, playing Yeah, longer. exactly. They played this series before this, too. You're absolutely right. EG have had the luxury of not having to have play that series. Uh, but, uh... I don't know. OG. They're seeing in it. They have a 5,000 net worth advantage. EG starting to get, take control of the map. It, it really depends on, you know, the abilities that are up, the heroes that are up. You know, oh, where, that, that's where the map position is at any given moment. Where, where EG is situated, where OG is situated. This yeah. is that's a huge counter, right? Yep. They have they have an MKB for forty minutes against Samael's Wind Ranger. He's gonna have this Radiance Burns to deal with, so he can't like blink out defensively. And once the bear gets on top of it, it gets one root, and Samael's just a goner, right? He can maybe uh, like he needs to finish up BKB for the next fight. That's for sure. Does he have enough here? He's, yep, he's got it. Go. Okay. He's got it. He doesn't have buyback, but. I know if he gets rooted right, at least he can um, BKB and he can also, if he gets on top of a hero, he doesn't have to worry about getting Savage Roars. Um, you know, once he gets a good Shackle shot and starts lining up that Focus Fire, um, he's he's not going to have to worry about just getting Savage Roared and lose out on that kill, that potential pick that opens the whole team fight up for them. Uh, this smoke would have been so good, but again, EG, they seem to know something is missed and they've backed themselves up into the, the high ground, so... They will not get caught. They could still, OG could still sit here in the trees and wait for something. But they have to push out bottom lane. And well, that's being controlled by evil geniuses. Roche is up here momentarily in about 20 to 30 seconds. And if EG head over there at this time, they'll be able to head into the pit, see that it's up. Probably take it very quickly again. Some of the Aegis cheese coming out. I believe this should be the third Roshan. All right, someone's... Someone's instant dying, right? If they get Agonim's Laguna Blade, 850 pure damage, and then take away another 11% uh, of your HP from Ice Blast, <laughs> it doesn't leave you a whole lot to work with. No, you're, you're pretty much dead. Pretty much dead if you're caught by that. It's never uh, a fun time. Oh, that's right, there's a second life, so if someone gets killed, hopefully it's the person with the Aegis, which will probably be Smail at this point. I, again, the Ice Blast is going to come. It's not going to be on Roshan. They won't see crit with it. Top's getting pushed in, but OG think that everyone's missing. They don't know where they are. And yeah, all actuality, they're in the Roche pit. And they will not be able to get there in time to contest. This is absolutely 100% EG's agents as well as G's. This is where you want that Ags on your Lone Druid actual hero. So the Spirit Breaker just goes straight through the base. But unfortunately, all he can do is get the creeps there. And then RTZ takes the aggro off of those buildings. King of RTZ. What does he buy now that he's the AC? Desolator is always the, the the thing that Zai would buy if he got enough money later on in the game when like AC was already purchased in Agadim Scepter. Yeah, I think he legitimately just builds more right click damage. Um, I don't know. Is Daedalus the right item? Is MKB the right item? They don't is... have a Death Letter, right? I mean, they, they, I mean yeah, it's a little... they, they already have a lot of armor. Really but... Die, but Sumail was ready for it still. Shack shot will go with the BKB is in time. Ice Blast actually misses, but look at the damage S4 is taking. Level 3 focus fire. The universe does get the Doom off before getting Laguna Bladed, and he's actually going to live. The Chain Frost, all of a sudden, this fight is terrible for OG. Even the Shackle Shot connecting up onto the low Druid. The Savage Roar was there, but Sumail pops the BKB perfectly timed. Four dead, it's going to be all five, with Sumail more than likely getting this triple kill. Power Shot, yeah, he wanted his style. Zaya says, listen, you're not getting your triple because guess what? You're, you're playing around. We're going to get all five dead. EG will take the fight. And now it is time to push straight down mid and see what type of buybacks OG have available. What the hell was that gem that came out of the Wind Ranger? I, I don't know. The hell? She, I didn't know, even know she had a taunt. Taunt, yeah, apparently. But well, they they got a they got a gem. They just wiped OG. OG are going to be forced into buybacks here, and fortunately they do have a bear for the lone druid. But this is potentially irreparable damage that's going to be done to their economy and their base. Flip is up. Gives them a couple of seconds of 
rep uh, reprise here, but they don't have Lena for 20 seconds, 29 seconds here, so. Alright, Fly, three this towers is, is gone. This is your time to go ham, dude. Yeah, Fly, Fly gotta... needs to find, uh... I don't know, He's not found just... one this whole entire game. If EG he goes back in, if, they're, if, if EG gets a little greedy here, this could get punished. But they're, they're gonna back. They're just gonna they, back. They're happy with the buyback on the Lone Druid. They and... still have the Aegis, I believe, I'm pretty sure. Yes, they do. Wait till the BKB is back up for Smail, which it is now. I think they can go again, I believe. Uh, maybe wait 45 seconds, because Black Hole wasn't used by Enigma, um, and they do have the Doom on cooldown. Uh, so I, I think that might be the only thing that you wait for, yeah. is, I, is just to have that too. Yeah. Bottom pushed out, top is pushing in currently from OG, but they can keep that pushed out with Familiars, which are currently mid. They're trying to find them. No such luck. Yeah, so Sumail will take care of this quickly, and they'll go again. EG trying to finish this game off. OG trying to keep pace. This is game five of Elimination Mode 2.0. Well, we've talked about all the marbles. They are indeed on the line here. And uh, what could have been a gyrocopter carry pickup turns into a visage carry pickup for Arteezy. Which makes me very happy. <laughs> Will it actually work? Visage. Yeah, that's the question, really. I mean... I mean, it's worked so far, so you can definitely say it was it was worth the last pick. I I think over Gyrocopter, like eleven, four, and five, very respectable uh, score for your carry. He's had um, pretty consistent impact. Even if like Shabale is very clearly the the primary carry in this game, I think Arteezy's done enough on this visage to make the pick worth it. Um, and in some ways, I guess. Ooh, that bear. Oh, he's got another sad. one, but. It's a, it's at least one bear dead. Yeah, because this matches up with the timing you wanted, right? Where yeah. they're going to push high ground with Doom, and now they know there's only one bear for them to work off of for two minutes. The goal, kill no tail, kill the bear, one of those two things. And if you could do that, you're in a good spot. Just dealing with these damn pushes. Got right. the familiars the up at top lane, wyvern at bottom. You're going to have to pull the trigger eventually. You can't wait for the ages to expire, I don't think. Well, they also have some really big items that they're going to be picking up soon, so... Arteezy's almost got 5k golds. A Smail's got it at 3k. The Wyvern has 3k as well. I, I have no idea what they're going to be picking up, but... <laughs> there's definitely... Like, there's a there's like 10, 12,000 net worth that's missing on EG for this next push, simply because they don't have their next round of items. They still might try to go nonetheless with that Aegis. Let's stay. Sumail side steps it again. I feel like they're just narrowly missing these LSAs every time. The radius is just small, it seems like. Anyway. Charge up. S4 won't go for it. Knows that a shot shot is more than likely coming his way, and he'd rather not use his B game unless he really has to. Hey, just right, proclaimed. Well, that's it. Pick you back up now, and you probably farm. As you had mentioned, get the, the next round of items for evil geniuses. I mean, uh, if you look at it, right, it's EG are up by 5,000 gold, but if you're holding on to, you know, 10, 15,000 gold and you're in, in the bank and you haven't actually spent it, then that net worth advantage that you have doesn't mean anything. Yeah. So um, maybe just, uh, I don't even know what the next round of items. Again, we can continue to theorycraft about I, I'm what still saying, Visage is getting. But... I'm still saying Desolator for the Visage. I, don't ah, I think it's good, but there's other items too, to be fair. Yeah, maybe, maybe he feels like it's also 46 minutes game, right? Maybe he right, feels like he point. doesn't want a, a mid-tier item, which right. is what Desolator is. Um, I, I kind of agree with oh, so Maelstrom. This ah, was the other item right. I think that, that Zy went for a lot, I believe. This, so, it's, this is a good way to keep the waves pushed out without having to use your familiars. The static charge, if he gets a completed Mjolnir, is going to be nice to have um, for all this damage over time from OG. They've got an opportunity here, whether or not they want to use it to get to the high ground. It's be seen that bear. How long do they have on another summon? They already have it. They have another summon already, so that that second bear, not a big deal. They've uh, survived. Here comes the next set of familiars. Summon back by Arteezy. To the high ground we go. Sumail popping up his focus fire, and boy, does this thing fall quickly. And there, there is no glyph indeed. Jackal shot lashes onto both Alina and the bear. This bear will die. It will be the first. They have a resummon. Meanwhile, there's going to be the 
Cold feet onto the Doom. BKB, S4, Nether Strike. They want to get this kill. He's got the Glimmer Cape up. He's got a BKB himself. But too bad he can't get it off. Nor would it have done anything to that Laguna Blade. Oh yeah, Laguna Blade that he just got destroyed by. He's dead for 60 seconds. So that'll stop the push. I guess we'll wait for the next Roshan. Potentially. They did do a lot of damage to the Tier 3 Tower. I will say that much. It's pretty much dead at this point. One more push will get it down rather quickly. Munchem. Oh, I just realized you did the first game, didn't you? Did. Yeah. Oh Jesus! <laughs> it's been a long ass day for you too. I did the first series. <laughs> uh, I paneled the second series. And now I'm doing the final <laughs> series. It's up at 11 a.m. to cast, and it is 11 p.m. <laughs> Good stuff. Ah! <laughs> Andrew, the mod. clearly not not feeling it. Sumail. Oh, oh god, here. they're gonna get the pickoff. Sumail cannot afford to die here. Good force, BKB. He's he's gonna be fine in the end. It's a very good force to have to keep him alive from crit. Shack shot this bear. No, nope, not gonna latch. They even guarding Greaves just to make sure it can get out and alive. Uh, really good attempt. The way they yeah. set that up, right? The the charge to break the link in, instantly into the Nether Strike with the Ice Blast over the top. Like if they just had like Lena with the Laguna Blade, you know, then they get that quick kill even through the BKB potentially, uh, and and all of a sudden, boom! You've got this high ground push that is going to force a buyback out of Samael. You just gave yourself a, a win condition for the next five minutes, right? Kill Samael, save the world. That's something we haven't really seen. It's just like a hero that dies and like is forced to buy back. There was that one big fight where they wiped through five nothing, five nothing for EG. That was a long time ago. That was a significant amount of time ago. At the very least, like it was thirty nine minutes, maybe ten minutes ago, when that happened. Like we haven't really seen heroes die recently. We've seen like universe go down, but it's only been like one pick, and that pick is usually not that important. But now Sumail is getting pinged mid. However, they're just not in position to be able to chase him down. Roche is up in about 10 seconds, maybe even less than that. So again, Roshan becomes the big point of contention, and this time maybe OG can try to go for it. They need to because they really can't afford to give away another Aegis and Cheese, I feel like. They just cannot kill Sumail twice in a row. And the owner is now up for Arteezy, so they have the Static Shield on top of the fact that it's 2.3k gold, gold, which means that he's plenty for buyback. Sumail is sitting at level 21. He's got the Chrysalis. The Daedalus will probably be his next item. And for the Bloodthorn, but I, I believe Chris uh, Daedalus will do the, the choice for him. But Roche is up, and EG are heading in that general direction. God, they, they need a BKB real badly on Fly, so we can finally get an impactful uh, ultimate. No, I, I, I said, like, early on, it was like, no, they don't give a shit about Black Hole. But at a certain <laughs> point, you know... You, you kind of care. kind of care. Like, a the early bit. impact of Midnight, uh, of, of having um, Malefice... And, and having an early mech, like, that's all fine, well, and good. But, you know, by 50 minutes, you kind of start going, okay, we kind of need that impact now. So, um, if they get this Roshan, maybe uh, over the next, like, three minutes, they're able to get farm time for Fly to be able to complete his BKB and, and they go, go high ground. With that. It's just does he want to... He doesn't have enough money yet, but when he does have yeah. enough money, is he going to save it for buyback or is he going to save it for an else? I, I, I don't know. I mean, rough call. I actually can't. He can't even go BKB, right? Because he's. He, I think he has to go Lincoln's. Because it's still not a chain just frost. Doom, there, There's right? a chain frost and a doom. Yeah. Oh so. Jesus Christ! There's actually three ultimates that go through uh, BKB. I was curse. thinking it was just doom. Winter's curse as well. They get the shackles. That has oh, no. no, buddy. That's not. That's not what you need to do. All right. And there now goes they're looking your for more. As for. Uh, oh, I thought they were gonna bring it down, but he rotated in, and Roshan is still up and alive. Surprisingly, and, it, and it, even when OG gets in the pit first, they just cannot seem to find the magic kill on Roshan, which, boy, such a necessity. It really uh, is. At this point in the game, it's like hitting that black hole like you were talking about. It's the same sort of thing. You need Roshan after a certain point of the game to be able to win. Got cheese now for our TZ and a Aegis for Wind Ranger. When you have what the Aegis Chris too, you feel, you feel confidence in your split pushing too. Like, Samael can be here solo down here in the bottom lane because he knows no one's going to go like uh, no this move go from EG. Him. Whether or not Anna or anybody from OG sees it coming, I mean, it's to be seen. He might run right into them. Sick burn. See you later. Yule Scepter will try to keep him alive. He has no blink dagger. That is a dead Lena. Dead, dead, dead. Now it's time to test the waters of the buyback. And you push in time. You do have mid pushed in a little bit, and you can already see that someone is over there. It's Sumail. I think if you go mid now, 
Oh, they have a refresher orb on the freaking Winter Wyvern too. Oh, Double Jesus. Winter's Curse. Damn. Okay, oh, and the they're gonna have a Bloodthorn. On yeah, I was saying I thought it might have been the Daedalus, but it is a Bloodthorn. Yeah, it's Bloodthorn. Uh, we've seen we've seen these late game Bloodthorns be picked up by so many people just because it's it's so good having multiple people be able to benefit off of the crit and also be able to have a second disable. So they're going to force the buyback out of the Lena here and probably still keep going no matter yeah, what. Yeah, I, I think so. They want to try to take them into the tower bottom. There is a glyph. Not being used yet. And it won't be used. Team HP. GRX denies it. Knows that inevitably that is going to be a dead tower. Here comes the familiars. Look at the range rack damage. And he gets off the stun. Not only that, Spirit Bear might die. We get held up by the Guardian Greaves. Now that's on cooldown. Now they're focusing on the Melee Rex. The Glyph will finally come out. RTZ is going to back the Familiars up and away. They're really holding on this buyback for the Lena. Up in 12 seconds. She's probably not going to use it at this point, but that means that this Rex is gone. They're going to have to give this up. Free set for EG. They'll back together. Now, do they head mid is the question. The answer to that yeah. is yes. Jack the shot. Blink back in. Nope. Just the Spirit Bear. Oh, the Black, Black Hole on the three. The Ice Blast coming out as well. The LSA, the Dragon Slave, so far two. It's going to be three. That is the Aegis. Flies low. Will die to the Familiars. He finally finds it. The one Black Hole that he needed. They get the stun off. Windraiser still has the BKB. Has to use it. Now running directly into the base. He's going to try to run all the way around. Blink is up in two. Now keeps getting canceled. S4 is here. Needs the dash. He gets it. The Dragon Slave gets the kill. And now the Familiars might fall on top. Pretty oh god. Dead. Wow. That <laughs> man, we're setting this up and we're just like, all right, fly. <laughs> you know, yeah. no one gives a shit about Black Hole for the first 35 minutes of the game, but now now this we want to see time, one buddy. and he finally got one. They're going to be able to force buybacks out of EG. And this time around, like I said, they would force the buyback out of Lena, but OG wisely gave up Elena Rax in exchange for keeping that buyback intact. But with three heroes gone, I, I, I just don't see them being able to hold on to these buybacks at least not the win rangers right she's just dead for too long she died like so late into that team fight yeah that it actually plays it against sure. her and when she uses it it's going to be the big question they're pushing there's the winner's curse it doesn't really that? connect onto anybody it only stops xana from hitting the tower but the lone druid there is doing some good work already they might even up this rack Great gonna get caught ice flash pushed out but the lagoon away brings it down buys back immediately still no buyback from smell the mid racks is gone visage is up they're going to look towards the top, the, the top racks now with the tier 3 gone as well exposed there. Now they're going to use the Refresher Orb. There's the Yules coming out for Melina. They have Winner's Curse again. The Spirit Bear will drop for the first time. The Resummon comes out. Anna in trouble and will fall. Universe tops the BKB. No tail high tailing it out of there as well. Sumail not forced to buy back. They get the Winner's Curse off. They really want the second Spirit Bear. And with that, that can maybe mean another push coming out. Now the mouth is coming out, making sure Universe can't go. As for charging back in, is the Bear dead? It is not. The Splinter Blast live. will not do the job. Oh my god. Oh they, god, and it looks like everyone else is gonna escape too. They're like trying to hunt, but even they Universe can't find can't anybody. Close they, the everybody's keeping out, they all made it. The only one oh. that died is the Lich. Alright, so they used their buyback on the Wyvern. Somehow they kept the Wind Ranger's out. buyback. I was I was so sure that they were just gonna lose too much of their base from that, but EG they made even like e like even the more the dramatic sacrifice, right? Kept that buyback intact. Lost their mid lane Arax, lost tier three, almost lost the top lane, but they managed to hold um, with just their supports, which is pretty impressive, honestly. I think we might be waiting for another Roshan here, Cap. I yeah, have a feeling we've got a long <laughs> one in us. Uh, oh, there's a double damage sitting there, too. Ooh, that would be nice. That, that may actually. I don't know. It's it's so strong on Wind Ranger. Like, do you consider it? Do you consider maybe just like well, they have to look trying to first. poke at the enemy they have to with go that find double the damage? First. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Rush is not up like for another four minutes. And uh, how long is that actual respawn? Let's see. It's actually a pretty quick respawn. It's only one extra minute. It's nine minutes total, I believe. Okay, so some there really. It is. I love being able to break down like game team fights. Um, and like, what are the clutch abilities, right? Because it, it, like, strategy kind of gets thrown out the window. At a yeah. certain point, strategy failed both of these teams. They didn't reach yep. their win condition, right? Yep. So yep. now, now it comes down to your individual plays in this late game scenarios and, and also late game tactics. So 
when it comes to the team fights, right, the big abilities, you have this BKB on Enigma with the Blink Dagger. He has the opportunity to get a pretty good Blink despite all this damage flying. That's one of the really big abilities. Another one is the Lotus Orb for OG's S4. Um, it, he has the potential to be able to get a really good bounce back of Doom onto Doom, or even better, Winter's Curse bounce back onto the Winter Wyvern, which is very likely to be effective if he actually bounces it back, because EG probably aren't going to be paying that good of a uh, uh to their positioning. Well, I guess they got Black Hole to deal with, so it just may come as a surprise no matter what. Um, th those are like some two really big ones. Obviously, EG is more of the Winter's Curse and their Shackle shots. Samael has really got to be on point with his positioning, uh, make sure he's able to get those right kind of focus fires and jackal shots to output the damage they desperately need. Because he, he is like really the carry for them. Visage can do a lot of damage in a very short period of time, um, but it's not going to eat all the way through uh, a lone druid. It's not going to eat all the way through a, a spirit breaker necessarily. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. They need Samael to be the one outputting that damage. And then obviously Doom, right? Doom Doom has to be able to get his his initiation onto someone Probably who fly. is really impactful. Yeah, you you normally think it's fly, but you know, who knows? Maybe he sees an opportunity Anna, to be able to catch Anna uh, somehow with his Lincoln sound or something and you know, finish him off before he gets off a of Laguna Blade. You know, there there's a lot of opportunities that may present itself other than the traditional keep Enigma out of the game. Oh, who would think it would come down to a 58-minute game with all of these crazy shenanigan picks? The last 10 heroes besides good old gyrocopter and techies. Well, this, is, this is the last 10 of them that are really doing the best that they can. EG are in a, well, a uh, barn burner with OG at this point. I was going to say they had an advantage, but it's not true anymore after the last fight. The advantage is zero. The OG have done a great job. This lone druid, especially in Hotel, has done everything he can and more. You just push out, keep these lanes even, find kills, fly that big black hole, saves them, keeps this game going. If that black hole's not there, this game probably has ended already, and EG's as the victors. As the smoke comes out, yeah, OG smokes are, are in the base. Smokes are the super scarce resource in, in late game scenarios, and this is the only smoke that we'll see for a good like four minutes from both teams. So, Evil Genius is are so cool. They can see S4, they can kind of see him, he's a little bit out there, but they just don't really have quite the catch that they want. He's like able to inching, make that go. He's inching ever so far out, but they just cannot find him. Now that's the, the smoke is over. Roshan is respawning in less than a minute or so. The Aghanim Scepter, which is what you talked about maybe 20 minutes ago, I think, for the Lone Druid has been picked up. Which means that if uh, they're not really diligent about split pushing or keeping these waves pushed out to begin with, that means the Lone Druid will take the racks in that top lane, which I don't know if EG can afford. It is only going to be one extra set of racks here, and, and I, they have really good wave clear, but the amount of push that OG have, it could be a bit tough. Ice Blast, the, they find the Courier is in the pit. They know that it's still down. The Courier will spot this first before anything else, and it's about to spawn in 20 seconds or so. 60 30. minutes, 29 to 31. It's been a bit of a quiet game. There's been a lot of kills. It's been a bunch of highs and lows. Now we're kind of waiting for that next it, big it would, fight. It feels like, right, that EG have the advantage to taking Roshan, but they're just about to lose it with this Lone Druid Bear pushing top. Like, the the, the push is going to come in about the time that they're trying to do Roshan, right? So Mel sees it now, and he's going to open up, but that push is going to be coming in pretty fast from that top lane. Let's see this here. is going to be really close. Certainly will be. They're already kind of in the vicinity now. Grid is in a great position. The Hex is going to come out. That is Arteezy. They have the double Winter's Curse. It's broken. The charge is up. They want to make sure they can get out Wyvern first. Now the Laguna Blade, he's gone. No more double Winter's Curse. They get off the Black Hole, but it's not good. The Doom comes out. The Chain Frost cancels it. And now he's falling. He will go down. S4 in trouble. Sumail looking for the right clicks and auto attack. The Spirit Bear is stunned up as well. Three dead. It'll be the Bear going down next to No Tail. TP's out in time. Which means that this Roche is EG's. And a buyback is going to have to be used here from somebody on this OG side. But they did get the second lane of Rax at top lane, and they're still putting pressure out for the Spear Bear. He just boots and travel the Bear in uh, to continue up. As long as he doesn't lose it, oh my. They, they, they are the still in an okay place. This buyback might not be needed because the, lane, yeah. the waves are all pushed out, but obviously except bottom. Which, of course, they, they took that set of Rax. This is getting a bit tricky. The Lich is left here to do this on his own.
which means it's going to be four versus, well, three versus two if they continue on before the buybacks. You can see Sumail as well as the Visage for Millers are heading right down there. Ortiz is going to come up and deal with this because he has the Mjolnir, which is going to make this a bit easier for him to clear than the Lich would. And the Lich will head towards that mid lane so he can help out. Does Ortiz have boots to travel? Absolutely. He bots in as soon as he's ready to push. Buyback status right now. Lone Druid doesn't have it. If he dies, this game might just end. But uh, they might not get anything out of this with Flip up and uh, the Spear Breaker up in 10 seconds. I don't know if they can really do much here. Yeah, I mean, like, even if EG was faster on that push, I think OG would again do the trade off of, okay, you can take mid lane of ranks. We will not blow a single buyback. Oh, that shot was close. Ice Blast. He has BKP. He gets forced away. Glimmer caped on top. Time to back up. Oh. So back and forth we go. Game is certainly a long one. Action a plenty. There is nothing significant that's missing from either team. Like teams have their buybacks for the most part. Like there's a little bit of gold missing on OG, but they'll get it eventually. Um, there's no like really big cooldowns that they're all just gonna fall in line within the next 30 seconds as well. Same as the buyback. So there is nothing significant that is on either side that actually handicaps them. Right? You've got an Aegis on one side, but you've got a second lane of racks for OG um, that they took atop. In, in some ways, that feels like a worthy trade because now if you, it's just like one, one small lapse of judgment. Oh, they got the bear. Okay. TN, just first, and then the boots of travel. Dead. Damn, that Bloodthorn was ridiculous. You saw those numbers pop up. Yeah. Crazy. Sumail is going to get Ice Blasted. Now they might find more mid. S4 hexed up. They need more lockdown, however. Ice Blast. I think he's fine, actually. They won't be able to chase him down. They wanted something. Oh, and they lose familiar too. He's got to be careful. Only one hero doesn't have buyback. It's the Enigma. But he's ready to go with that black hole if he needs to. The bear is down once. Uh, it has been resummoned. It is pushing top. If they can fight it again. And who, baby? I don't know what happens. I don't, I don't think you want to fight into this Aegis. I think you just rely on the split push that's happening at top. And maybe you give up this mid lane of Rax. You know, you're still going to poke and prod, but I, I'm not sure if you want to fully commit. I don't know. They're posturing very aggressively, and they're finding a couple of abilities that are connecting on Sumail. Anna goes out a little too far. Shot to shot. Not connecting. Lincoln Spear is broken. But here we go again. This is now up onto the Wind Ranger, but guess what? This bottom rack is about to be taken by the Spear Bear. They have to TP back. And now there's the hunt coming from Anna, looking to find somebody TPing away. There, it's going to get out. But how will everyone else fare? Anna gets shackled up. The Lotus Orb is there. Do they have the damage? The BKBs pop. Power shot, not in time. Guardian Greaves gets him away. Dragon Slaves. Millers. Uh oh, now the tier four. And he keeps resummoning it and bringing it back and TPing in. Spearfare is finally back in the base and it's going to push out this bottom lane. And again, EG just cannot deal with the split push from this Academ Scepter Bear. No tail. Oh my god. No tail's trying to bump up that Academ Scepter. Uh on Lone Druid, he's trying to bump it up the and list yeah, a little bit. Yeah, he really is. Because at this point, he's pretty much winning the game with it. And then again, Thanks I don't think Shannon would move too. it up even like, if he did win with it. Yeah, Evil Geniuses have to actually have a strategy against the Lone Druid, right? They, ha they have to do things like the Winter's Curse leading into Boots of Travel TPs, you know? They, like, this is a legitimately a hero that you have to gank when it split pushes. And yeah, you have to accept the fact that it, it only has a two-minute cooldown and he has two of them. But uh, it's something that you actually have to gank um, in order to gain control of this map back. Because otherwise, OG just stalls you out every single time you go for the push high ground. Um, they, you, you, as you said, like they posture very aggressively, right? They're saying, go into us. Because if, if the fight actually breaks out, right? It's just going to be a relatively long, drawn-out fight where buybacks are going to be used by OG. And they'll get the, the bottom lane. They'll get Mega Creep. And as long as they hold and they don't lose anybody uh, and they don't get any diebacks, then that's a winning scenario in some ways, right? EG are then forced into the, okay, we do or die. We have to end this game and push. Otherwise, we're, we're dealing with mega creeps. And their heroes are not very good at dealing with it, right? <laughs> the, the split push of the, the, the familiars, for example, well, that goes out the window. <laughs> like, right. familiars can't deal with mega creeps. Uh, he, has split Shadow Blade on, he has Shadow Blade on the Spirit Bear. If his bear gets close enough with the creep wave... He could just get that last set of racks. They just won't see it coming. Yeah, vision is is really hard to come by this late into the game. So and and pickoffs are everything. 
um, pickoffs can easily just one pickoff can win you in the game at this point in time. So uh, these items like Shadowblade, like that's a really smart pickup from. Well, from I wouldn't Anna. say I wouldn't say one pickoff. If you look at the buyback chart, every single person in the game has one. True, but, true. But you know what I mean. I, like, I, you get, I get what you are saying. The buyback. I get what you're saying, Cap. I do. Jackal shot. They found the bear. But Thorn <laughs> dead. Guess what? Got it once. Now you need to get it again. He re-summons it, TPs it up top immediately. It's just that, it's the cycle that never ends. It really is. And like, what, what are they gonna do? Like, they, are they gonna boot to travel all of them up to top lane and try and gank that lone druid They've again? They've drawn the line, Cap. Look at the line that has all been right. drawn. They're going they for that bear. They're, they're not like, boots of traveling, they're walking. Fuck you, bear. Time We're coming for you. I don't blame them. This bear <laughs> the, is probably by the time they kill this bear, they'll have... What, maybe 60 seconds? Yeah. Uh, they're not even going to get it. 60 seconds, and also, guess what? Their waves are pushing in super hardcore. Like, this smoke is... They might find a pickoff here, like Fly, or, or the Lena. The Lena would be nice. Well, they'll find Fly instead. Winner's Curse to stop him from moving anywhere. And then he's dead. Nah, <laughs> just... Now you can refresh, and Anna's sitting in the sideline now, trying to continue to push. Zumail's going to clear out the creep wave top. All right, well, dead Enigma, but what can you get off of it? Probably nothing. Bear has been scouted again, it looks like. Oh, they know that it's shadow there. Shadowblading bear is the stupidest thing oh, I've kills seen. <laughs> okay, well. This is actually so silly. He's running around with his shadow blade bear and it's it's working so because what can you do? Like, it is working. Oh OG just like position that like Anna here, right? Like if they'd gone some for some sort of like four man push through top lane, he just would have cut the creep way. Got him. Oh, Bear's got dead, it. but guess what? There's only like 30 seconds, 30 seconds the next on the resummon. But they are doing it, right? They're grinding back slowly but surely. They're grinding back map control. And they're going to get a lot in this next 30 seconds where they don't have to worry about the lone druid. Um, and even if they can't go high ground with while the bear is down, they can at least get a lot of map control and maybe force a fight within the next two minutes that takes advantage of the fact that, yes, the bear is up, but he doesn't have a replacement. So e evil geniuses are slowly but surely doing it for themselves. It's at a cost of a bit of their tier 3 HP at the bottom. Alright, the bear is up. It's already TPing back top. But they might have given themselves enough of map control here. To at least get the racks. Maybe. Probably not. It's again that posturing problem. Hey, yeah. come fight us, you know. I do like what Arteezy is doing. He's kind of sort of cutting the creep away with, with his familiars, which is nice. He's, he's they're like gonna cut the group. They're gonna cut the. It. They're actually gonna cut the top group wave. They actually just want to take the top racks, I think, which I do not blame them for. That is one of the lanes they are missing. I'm yeah, they found away. an opening. Again, the tier three tower takes a small amount of damage. Nothing too significant. And the bear is now in the base. The shadow blade. And there now you, you have familiars on cooldown. It's not for backdoor two minutes. protected. They already TP with Sumail. Oh, Jesus. It's two tier three is gone. Rat Dota. And oh, he gets God, the refresher. <laughs> he gets the refresher. You have three pairs. Just as I thought EG were putting together a plan to be able to deal with this, they can't actually push high ground and do anything, and they lost their tier three at bottom. Just as I thought, they were like, they've got this carefully constructed plan they thought over the last like 15 we, minutes we, of dealing with this. We have the like, technology. <laughs> we can deal with this. This is doable. And then you see that refresh orb come out, and you're, you just raise your hand, and you're like, fuck it. What do I do here? Honestly, yeah, I don't it, know. Yeah, that scene in the movies, you know, where where the the mastermind lays down this this big rolled up piece of paper and, and unreels it, and they have this master plan that's put together. Like that's what I thought EG had. Like they were like, this is how we deal with the load. Ocean's Eleven of killing bears. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and it's just all goes to shit. Load yep. just just comes in and shits all over the table. No kill is just enjoying himself at this He's point. I'm his sure. Refresher too. He is Boy. laughing his way to uh, p a potential victory here. We've hit the 71 minute mark, by the way, in case you haven't been watching the clock. It is currently almost, uh, I think, uh, what is it, 11 o'clock here uh, on the on the uh, in mountain time here in, in good old Colorado. <laughs> we're, we're getting there, my friend. It could go on for another freaking hour, which I mean, I'm totally down for. Listen, what what made, like, wait, what is this? Get some breath. What is this? There's just a gem down on the high what ground. Is this? <laughs> yeah. What? Someone listen. If in case we need a gem later on down the road, we'll find it up here in the high ground. They have found the bear again. Okay, that's one. 
Add it on your fingers. Now we need two more. Charge in S4. Oh, is down. oh well, that's actually a big kill. Fred is gonna fall. He does a buyback. I'll say everyone has buyback at this point. And the gem is down. But don't worry, there's another one on the cliff up here, <laughs> in case you need it <laughs> for a rainy day. Yeah. I, I can't imagine. They, like... they literally just walk by it. They're like, we we do not need that gem. <laughs> Okay, the, the courier will come get it eventually, I'm sure, is, yeah, is what they, they're thinking. You no, know, like everyone, everyone's item slots are precious at this point, so no one's going to bother with it right now. They need some boots to travel so they can get uh, on Flyer and Jerex. Jackal shot, nice slash, S4. Bloodthorn is up. He might die to this. It looks like the BKB will be just in time. Fly was looking for the black hole. He couldn't quite find it. Now they're doing with the Lincoln Spear being broken. Fly's like, no, not again. He will die almost certainly to this. The Sheepings Guard will bring him down. Jerex gets off a nice ice blast, but dies in the end. Two down. Big kills. And uh, they can push out bottom and mid. The top's being pushed in, too. They could just bot it in there, maybe, and just try to take that rack. But instead, guess where the bear is? If he feed mid, it shadow bladed up, and guess where it's headed? <laughs> it's going headed right for that base. Look, it's just going right by the creep wave. <laughs> All right, here we go. The racks are already TPing in. They oh, know God, it's oh almost my. dead already. That, that literally hit it three times. It almost killed the range racks. Holy shit. No tail That's... is whittling them down. Dude, this is what I was talking about. They're like, this is the danger of going late game against Axel and Druid. It's because, yeah, what happened is they just forced a buyback out of the, the Winter Wyvern, and almost every other composition would go, okay, let's push down against them uh, and force them to use their two buybacks, right? Like, we had to use one of ours, let's force them to use buybacks, but with this Lone Druid split pushing, they can't actually force this. They can't force the sacrifice that OG had to make in order to get that buyback out of them. They, they can't do anything. There's no response. Like, the, all they can get right now is Roshan. Oh, boy. The Silver this Edge. Has been ridiculous. They now have a double Laguna for the Lena and a double Hex, too. They do get Roche. They'll give the Aegis to uh, Crit. And the Cheese is going to sit in there for a moment longer. Our kids will fight with Age, so. It does, true. Well, I mean, depending on the Cheese and also. Oh, God, RTZ, that, you can't fight that bear. <laughs> <laughs> there is not something you can deal with. At what point do you... <laughs> I don't think EG... I'm going to be honest with you, man. I don't know if EG can win anymore. I don't... Uh, I mean, there's always potential, right? The right the right fuck up, the right misplay. Um, it, it's just... I think the advantage is in OG's court due to this... the nature of the split pushing of the Lone Druid. It just seems so difficult. I would be, you know... Very Every, impressive they can take this game back. It's definitely hard. Like you said, there's a, there's a, always a comeback potential, but it just seems like it is so difficult, and especially with the mentality that you that you have right now, kind of the what's happening to you is almost demoralizing. And Sumail just gets hit once by that bear. It does a lot of got, damage. They got RTZ. S4. Oh, God. Oh, my. That Hex might be able to get him out. RTZ so low. He oh actually way. makes it with, like, 50 HP. Now Sumail wants to kill S4, but he's already charged away to the creep wave up here in the top lane. And they won't go any further. He even pops the BKB TP. It is a five second BKB at this point. There's no reason not to do that. Just to be safe and so you don't get shackle shouted out of nowhere. 75 minutes cap. That's where we're at, buddy. Hang in there. Yeah. Okay, so what are... Where are the next big items that come in? Samael's got 6,500 gold on him. Um... What is he? I, I don't what do you know. sell? What do you need? Do you, like, you need a moon shard. He already has a moon shard, so forget that. Yeah, like, it, Mjolnir is needed to be able to push off these waves. Bloodthorn, Bloodthorn is, to kill is, the bear. Yeah, it's a, it's a really nice item against the bear, and it's a nice damage item. You need bots, too. I think you need both your Lincolns and your BKB. Maybe you don't need your BKB, but... You need you need Ags, because you're that's a significant damage amount of reduction that you're... It's 50... It's 30% damage reduction... Uh, instead of the zero that you, you have think, now. All right, someone so quickly do the numbers. Is divine better than having Aghanims up here? That's I'm sure it can't be. I need I need sure I need a statsman to help me out on this Trent. I need somebody to do the math that that is capable. And I clearly am not not in the best position to do it currently. And, so and the, the the difference between like if you get got rid of your Aghanim scepter on Wind Ranger and got a rapier instead, like what like do you? You lose or gain damage. It's got to be gain and damage, right? Thirty percent in exchange for. Oh, good point about the cooldown. Yeah, yeah. 
Oh, well, no, the uh, cooldown's always 15, isn't it? Nope. Wait. No, it goes down to zero. Yeah, uh, yeah that, that's rough to give up. Man, I, I'm not sure if he has any items that he can go into. Uh, Arteezy's pretty well maxed out. He also needs Milner, and all those other items are good for him. Uh oh, uh, Anna. Anna is probably dead here. Oh, nope. Blanket Spear first. Uh oh, here's Fly. Uh, they might not want to fight this LSA, Laguna Blade. And Black Hole if they need it. BKB has been popped to fly. Universe is dead now. Okay. That's a I kill. love the way they play that, but look at bottom lane. Oh god, it's the ganking mode. The Rax. They can't deal with it. Savage Roar doesn't quite hit the chain frost. They have to use the Werner's Curse. Now the Ice Flash is coming in and wasn't actually used. They're too busy killing mid, I believe. Sumail's getting caught. Sumail is dead to the Laguna Blade. Rax is still is narrowly alive here in this bottom lane. Yeah, I mean, two heroes just... down, the Rax is almost gone. I mean, OG this, this like, might be, this go. is a go time for OG. I think the, the Rax is going to have to hex it again. I think they have another Winner's Curse. He has the Refresher Orb, and it's going to fall. That bear is dead. They have a resummon, however. Five X are coming in for both Sumail as well as Universe. S4 has to back up. We might have seen the first big engagement for the long, like the first time in the longest time. I thought they were going to do something with it, but... Those I mean, come out and they don't want to fight, which I don't yeah. blame them for. For the next six minutes, OG have a chance to end this game finally. Like, even if they loosen up a little bit of control and stuff, even if they don't immediately go headlong into getting Megas at bottom lane, even if none of that happens, they know they have an advantage for the next six minutes. <laughs> I just, oh, I don't know what to say anymore. I mean, we've, we've clearly hit the situation. Out. We know what's at stake. We know how the game is going and progressing with the Spirit Bear. And this is this, a desperation. But smoke. then this is, then you see this and you're thinking, well, I was not expecting this play from Evil Geniuses. They smoke up. They are desperately trying to find a kill. Kill might be Anna, and that's an okay kill. But again, everybody has buyback for the Radiant team, with the exception of Jerax, which at this point they don't really mind. Now that this is might get caught, and other strikes going to go. RTZ, he's going to be the one that's caught. They might really fully commit to this. We might see a full breakout fight, but look at that. The Radiant scan catches them perfectly coming through both Universe and Crit. And now with RTZ dead, they want to focus and get him with his buyback being used. Might be more crit arc to burning. Shackle shot not latching. Here's the buyback. BKB for S4. They have the doom. They don't want to use the hex now up on the universe. He's still okay, ready to go. They can force him out if need be. I don't oh, even know if they it. have horses anymore. That's a third buyback, and they didn't get anything for it. Like they they even could have like uh, Winter's Curse that bear for a second, but then he uh, or excuse me, the Spear Breaker, but then he he got Lincoln's, and that was no longer a possibility. Right. Hear me out, Cap. Uh -huh. I, I think I already know the answer to this question, but let's say. E.g. five man down mid, and they keep the lanes moderately pushed out. Let's say the Spirit Bear gets in. Let's say E.g. are on the doorstep when the Spirit Bear is on the doorstep. If E.g. can take a fight and win a fight, can the Spirit Bear? I mean, the, the question is, can they? Can they? Can they win a fight and bring down the tier fours in the same amount of time that the Spirit Bear can bring down the tier fours? I think the answer to the question is no. The Spirit Bear is faster. I, I'm just like I trying think to the think. Spirit Breaker is faster. I know. Spirit. Like that, that Spirit Bear does so much demolish exactly. damage. Yeah, the demolish thing is the, is yeah, the ridiculous like part. You've got focus fire on, on, on Wind Rangers, so you feel like you should be able to do it. But... Right, but you're not able, always able to. As for his Shadow Blade, God, this is bad. bringing in Anna. Arteezy cannot afford another death. He has already bought back. Luckily, he will survive. There's the Winter's Curse. Anna. Laguna Blade brings down the ledge. He doesn't have buyback. He's not the most important target. Now the Lena does die. S4 trying to man fight here. Charged in. Looking for more. They've already lost two. They lost the Enigma on the backside. Still fighting. They actually TPI Jerax the time away from uh, what was the Universe Doom. Sumail finds himself a double kill. And here comes the Spirit Bear. Uh, I mean, Artiz is low enough. He could actually die to the Spirit Bear. Did He's trying with his life to defend. Glyph is still down, and here we go. He's not going to go for the Rage Rax. Use your familiars. Use your Artur, familiars. Artur, my Artur, God. are your familiars? Oh, my God. My Artur. Oh, choked in the clutch. I can't oh, believe this. All that. right, time to all end right, the well, game, EG. It's it's uh, it's now or never. You got to get the racks in the tier fours. Everybody has buyback. EG is pretty much this is their last gas. The spirit bear is back and it's not been killed. The desolator. He was buying the desolator, I believe. Unfortunately, he just didn't use his his familiars in time. I'm not sure. Oh God, he, he I has don't believe he actually now, wanted so the he racks can to join fall. the team. This is Megas now. He'll TP in the desolator ready. There, this is gonna be a heck of a fight. 
It's not just the Lone Druid Spirit Bear getting in the base and killing. There it goes. There it <laughs> oh goes. God. All right, Arthur, you got a micro this time. You, you gotta have get those to. You have to. You have to go for the tier fours here, but you still have a full team that you have to fight. Holy the shit! Lone Druid, oh my the god! The so Spirit Bear is crushing the black oh, hole. It's gonna be onto one. It's not enough to bring anybody down. Meanwhile, Zai, the Spirit Bear has fallen. It looks like, and is getting brought back to this base. The hex is up onto, of course, you male. Get it caught out. Now he's frozen by the cold feet. He has buyback ready to go. No, he doesn't. He's down for two minutes. But meanwhile, Arteezy's still going to work. Lena's in a buyback either, and Arteezy now has to back away. I can't stop this. No the tail is on back the into the base. Here comes Universe. They need to get back. They need to TP home. Arteezy's not there. The Spirit Bear going to work. It might die. Good Tavern Core. The Ice Armor's there. They bring it down. Kill no they have kill. No they silenced him. Not he actually is going to fall. He has no buyback. Oh, oh my shit. god. He has no buyback. But for how long? He actually doesn't oh, have the gold dead. for it. Oh, he's just dead too. Oh, Three fuck. versus two. The ancient is sitting at about maybe 25% HP. <laughs> X4 is shadow plated in the, the base. base. RTZ has a plenty of damage, but he can die rather quickly. You don't have your Lita, nor do you have no tail of the lone druid. We might uh, not have actually accomplished anything there. I don't think the game is going to end within I, the next like two minutes. I'm not no, sure. I think it is. I, I don't think EG. I don't think they beat Mega Creeps. I honestly don't think oh, and, like, they it's just really going to need be too much. They desperately need Sumail, but he does not have buyback for a minute and forty. If he can, if they can hold for fifty-five seconds here, three versus two and Mega Creeps, it would be astounding. Yeah, two heroes with three lanes of Mega Creeps and three heroes to deal with? I, I, I don't know how Universe and ITZ could possibly deal with that. You've with, got, with only I mean, a thousand HP on the on the Boys, throne. the lads, can they do it? 54 seconds for Roche as well. This is not, I mean, that doesn't matter at this point. I'm not even sure why I'm bringing it up. EG, really, they just need to survive for 30 more seconds. But oh, the, the Universe Creeps can get are coming a quick kill. in. Universe was looking for a fight. S4 pops the BKB preemptively. The Doom will come out now. Meanwhile, RTC, do they fly? Cole, they do not. RTC oh, blows it. up one. He might get fly as another. They get the instant on fly. Pops the They're BKB, get all but he will fall to the familiars. And now they want the throne. <laughs> it's a triple for RTC with all five dead to mail back at 11. But so too is Selena and Lone Druid, but nobody else is buyback in this game. What is Was happening? Was a single spell cast by any of OG there? I don't think so. I'm pretty sure they all just died. <laughs> I think they all just died. Like, Spirit Breaker got doomed. The the Ancient Apparition, like, pretty much just died to, to Scythe of Ice. And I don't think Fly got anything off there. He didn't have black holes. So right, this wasn't bear needs, like, this bear needs, impactful. like, two auto attacks to oh, win this game. My God. I thought they, they were like they were gonna get all the mega creeps going in, and they were they were just gonna like slowly corral EG closer and closer to the throne, and then they kind of pounce. But EG went out first; they got the initiation you know, first. It, it has to be rapier time for somebody here. I don't I don't care who, just somebody buy a rapier. That's EG the way still you win have game, a right? EG still have a cheese too. They need to give it to Smell. Oh, call oh, it. Smell's got buyback too. By the way, well, he's gonna he have buyback. Well, he's gonna get hexed up. He's gonna have to use it more than likely. TP was canceled. Laguna comes out. Yeah, he's dead. Okay, so the next buyback <laughs> that's coming up is in one minute, and that's our TZ. So <laughs> it's not a game of who has buyback anymore. It's whose buyback is coming up next. Who do we have next on the buyback list? It is our TZ, like you mentioned. Oh. And then I think flies after that. I, I mean, believe. if Universe ever gets enough gold, but he gets 2,000. No, he's not getting, listen, uh, he's not getting there anytime easy. soon. All right, EG. Here we go. You only have about man, 15 seconds. Uh, I mean, the, the good thing is the Spirit Bear is pretty far away from the base, uh, ladies and gentlemen. This is where the game ends. I, I don't oh, see how I don't see how either one of these teams like just survives. After well, that this ice fight. blast uh, that's going to do some good work here. That might stop them from pushing, and they don't seem to give a damn. It looks like. Oh God, they need to get Megas too, or they just have to go for tier fours, and I think that might be what they're doing. RTZ hits Holy like a shit. freaking truck. RTZ. That one auto attack killed the FNG on his own. Look at that tier four. It's gone. Oh, Lone but Druid Lone is going to the base. Lane. The Lich is the only one here right now. The Yule Sifter keeping the bear in place. They are going to TP back for it. There's the black hole. It'll catch out the wind range of the Laguna Blade. He pops the BKB. The refresher. The double Laguna. RTZ might be next to fall. And they don't have buyback. That, that's got to be it. It just has to be. The refresher. Winner's hurt. They're going to chain frost coming through as well. The bear. They need this kill on the bear do they have a resummon i think they All do right. they absolutely do oh but tz is back fear bears coming in again he needs one hit gg's oh, gone make me really no that's it og are your elimination 2.0 victors 2.0 champions whatever you want to call them